In 297 days, the Independent National Electoral Commission with sister state independent electoral commissions will embark on another round of electioneering. And like them, Nigerians from all walks of life, irrespective of social differences, we once more queue up at various polling units to decide the future of the country for another four years. But it is sad to note that there are Nigerians who queued up in 2015 to ask for similar quality representation at the local government, state and federal levels, who will not take part in this universal franchise. Whether Christians or Muslims, traditional worshippers or those who don't believe in the existence of a higher being, the demand is the same quality representation at all levels of government. This brings us to the topic of today's broadcast, quality representation at the grassroots. I am your host, Bennett Joshua. Join me in the conversation after this break. Welcome to Living Treasures Academy. Enjoy a conducive and serene learning environment qualified and experienced teachers, equipped computer laboratory and library, secured atmosphere, extracurricular activities, an all-embracing curriculum for total development of the child, comprehensive education for leadership, Join us today from crash to secondary levels. Leading Treasures Academy, committed to excellence. Information remains the bedrock in every stage of development. It develops both the human mind and the society at large. Television Nigerian is here to avail you with that information you need for all round development through its mind blowing programs such as news, talk shows, health and safety, governance and politics, sports, entertainment, kids, documentaries, finance, global happiness. Human disposition from childhood to adulthood is a manifestation of what you see, what you hear, and say. Tune in and stay tuned to TVN, Television Nigeria, broadcast beyond boundaries. Thanks for being there. We will begin today's program with a look at developmental challenges at the local government levels. The local government is the level of government closer to the people. Instructively, of Nigeria's 180 million population, more than half live, do businesses, and coexist at the local government level. Only less than 10% of the remaining population reside in urban centers and state capitals. By this margin, the rural areas need the bulk of government presence, especially in the provision of basic social amenities like pipe on water, good road network to link farmlands to markets and communities to one another, standard health care facilities, stable electricity supply to promote economic activities and prevent rural urban migration, crimes and a host of other vices, and most importantly, the security of lives and property. That's an ideal situation in countries as Cape Verde, with crude oil reserve as Nigeria, South Africa, Gabon and Botswana with a national domestic product about the same as Nigeria's 13.4 trillion naira in 2016. The natural question then would be, why is the Nigerian situation different? The last time Nigerians in most urban centers across the country enjoyed regular clean and hygienic pipe and water supply should be in the late 1980s or early 1990s. Here is the arithmetic. From 1960 to 2017, Nigeria's gross domestic product grew, though epileptically at some points. 
Fast forward to 2018, when its average earning clocked a little above the 13.4 trillion naira of 2017. An astronomical increase in figures indeed. But why has the growth in figures not translated to increase in I per capita income for Nigerians? II, nationwide infrastructural development. And triple I, Nigeria becoming an undisputed economic, military, industrial, and political superpower, at least in the African continent. The answer is hidden in this. With an elite that has perfected the art and science of distracting the people with ethnic and religious intolerance, while they loot the treasury dry and attend one another's birthdays, children's weddings, personal parties, and pilgrimage together. The, situation, the Nigerian situation is understandably grim, as records show that the average politically exposed Nigerian elite has a saving way above 80,000 United States dollars. This is in sharp contrast with the savings of an average Nigerian worker who lives on the government-approved national minimum wage of 18,000 Naira monthly. We will take a short break. When we return, our guest, Prince David Adetunji Adeye, a legal practitioner and an aspirant for the House of Representatives, will join us to discuss this and many other issues. Stay with us. going to your countries, trying to get rich. Hello viewers, welcome to the Oracle live on television Nigeria. The Oracle is a one hour free consultation clinic on governance, the democratic process, peace and security matters, and global The Oracle is hosted by Odenta Odenta, my humble self. I'll be a guide for a one hour show airing every Wednesday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. The concept of the oracle is simple. The past is rich with wisdom. The present is knowledge. The future possibility of mankind is how do we prophesy the things to come and the things to happen. That is what we tend to do and achieve in this engaging and profoundly Good to know you are still with us. It is still head on on television Nigeria. Before the break, we looked at a number of issues, including developmental challenges at the local government and the attitude of the Nigerian segment of the show, lawyer, energy analyst, and aspirant for the House of Representatives on the platform of Young Progressive Party, UPP, is with me, Prince David Adentunji Adeye. You are welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Ben. Thank How you are so you much. today? Very well, Ben. You are welcome. You. Right. So I'll go straight to the matter. Right. It is 200 and... 97 days to the 2019 general elections. And like in the past, the politicians and other players are at it again. Right. Now, it gives us a sense of concern. Right. The killings in parts of the country by suspected full and right. the politicization of ordinarily harmless remarks by President Muhammad Buhari, right. and demands by the likes of President Olusegun Obasanjo and former head of state, Ibrahim Badomasi Babangida, for the current president to step down. What are your concerns about this? Uh, ben, uh, my concerns are huge, and my concerns are predicated on the um, you know, victimizations of the Nigerian people through um, the political um, result that we're having. We have a political crisis. 
and therefore um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a matter of survival. Um, one of the concerns that people begin to understand the matters are that they do have the power to get people who will do very developmental policies, who will go and implement things that drive development in, in, in the country. Now, you right mentioned the security, that, uh, security concern that we all have. The needless, needless killings of Nigerians by X-Men or even some of the um, dif different political you know, uh, um, killings and assassination that we have. Uh, it's a function that our security is not working. Our security has failed. Uh, just like most of every uh, arms of government uh, have not been efficient, that this institution have not been strong to try to provide a solution. It's also showing that we as a people, we have not really been determined about electing that credible leadership that will give us solutions going forward. All right, it brings me to a rather silent question that many persons wouldn't want to ask. The killings, the purported full and investment killings, don't you think these, these issues could co constitute distraction to take away the minds of Nigerians from the the government's drive at fighting corruption to its tasty. Um, ben, it's unfortunate if that, um, that if that it, if if it's calculated that way that um, uh, for political you know um, uh, reasons of for political game, life are too important. Lives are too sacrosanct. Life is not cheap. That for wherever. Essentially, stop if not completely, you know, um, you know, eradicate this senseless killing. For instance, we need to have um, responsive police force and security that goes after each incident of killing, that do a thorough investigation, and then make sure that through uh, the legal parameters we have, uh, prosecutors, I mean, I mean, the, the, the um, you know, perpetrators are prosecuted to send a sharp signal to the people behind this. So long that we don't address that, so long that we keep uh, giving political consideration or you know, interpreting in, in political lands, uh, this would continue. So to that extent, um, government and our justice system, as, as well as security system, need to do more. Doesn't that call to mind the need for community policing? Most, should we always shy away from the conversation to decentralize the Nigerian police force and create community police? By, by all means, we, we, that's the way to go. I, I think that that world will solve some of this problem. And that's why I've always been an advocate of state policing. I've always been an advocate of restructuring. We need to begin to look again at the kind of foundations we have. It's not serving us. It's not working. It's not effective. If you put community policing, for instance, um, at, at the height of, of security arrangement that you have um, you know, in, in the state, then you are likely to have responsive and quicker you know, um, security uh, response to some of these um, you know, killings and crises that we have. Because don't forget that the community know all where um, the, 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 the likely attack comes from. They, 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 they have their nose on the ground if they are empowered and structured and organized such a way that they are designed to respond to those things, um, I bet you that will drastically reduce. So uh, by all means, I advocate and I support that we should really devolve some of these security functions to, to, to state and by, by largest and to committees. That, that, that's what happens in some of the, you know, of, of, of the developed world. If you go to America, for instance, you have a uh, New York Correction Department, you have um, State Trooper, you have different um, uh, you know, uh, policing that are owned and driven by states who then put resources needed to make sure that the, the security actually function. What we have here uh, a policing that is centralized, that is dictated to from the center, and therefore it would naturally be very slow 
in terms of budget appropriation, in terms of deployment of resources, in terms of mobilization of even the human resources. You know, so I mean, I don't know why we, we're playing politics about this, why we are arguing back and forth on what is necessary, what is key, what can actually be a solution. I mean, what is the fear of asset policing? Some say, oh, it will be attacked by the, by the government and the state executive. But by, by no means, if you then have a very strong institution, you can do that. You can do that. But um, the, the, question, the natural question would be, how do we overcome the possible challenges that will come up should state policing be the subject matter? All right, OK. Um, Right now that we don't even have state policing, we are not even solving any problem that are arising out of this, you know, uh, insecurity that we have. Now to respond to your question, you need to build institutions. You need to have, uh, uh, you can then at that further level have an institution that polices the police. Therefore, that checks what the excesses or the infractions of who were made to, 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 to police us. So if you then have state policing, that has a, an overall, like a regulator or, or a supervisor that checks and, over, and, and, and see what they do, they'll be mindful just the way you have in the judicial, in the judicial system. You have the um, magistrate court, you have the high court, you have the appeal court, you have the supreme court. So if a, a judge is erroneously guided in his judgment at a lower the court, he has a supervisor up there in terms of the you know, you know, um, appellate court to then check and override that decision. The same thing in policing, the same thing in security. If you do have state policing, then you have an institution that checks, you know, um, and the people that check us. It's simple as that. It's simple, you just need to build institutions, not to be afraid of you know, devolving that, 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 that institution. So the concern basically is to set up institutions that will check make the activities of state police Absolutely. should they be set up. Now, An independent one and a dependent one. And it takes me to the next question. Let's talk about returning to the polling units after four years. Right. How much has that helped grassroots development in Nigeria? Um, on that note, it uh, um, dis dismissed, um, well, um, for the lack of word, let me say uh, gross failure across board, across board. Uh, there's been a political failure from every level of representation, from local government uh, elections to um, a state of uh, state house of assemblies to um, largely the national assembly and even to uh, the executive, the presidency, um, uh, we've we've underperformed as a nation. We've underperformed as um, uh, uh, for that period of four years. You know, I mean, you just need to check what what the reality is. Our debt profile is increasing by the day. As of today, we've not passed 2018 budget. We are in the fourth month of the year. Uh, you know, if you have not even finished. You know, uh, you know, this boss in 2017 budget. Then, uh, when do you, where do you start? How do you then bring, you know, development? How do you then build infrastructure? You see, um, from budgeting to other uh, areas of governance, it has been total failure, uh, unfortunately. It is convenient to assume that so far so good. Democracy, as we practice today, has not helped grassroots development. Well, um, it's, the democracy is not a problem, really. It's unfortunately uh, the quality and uh, kind of uh, leadership and or representation that we have that has failed. Um, if you have um, really sincere, good, spirited um, leaders and politicians, they will take the, the, the issue of the people to mind. They will be mindful of what kind of policy that they are enacting or what kind of policy they are formulating and then run through those policies that do give the, uh, the, the, the dividends that uh, are expected. So it's not really democracy that is, is at issue here, but the type of people that are, the democracy has churned out. And that's why the um, electorate this time do have an opportunity to say, okay, now we've made mistakes in the last four years, but this time we are going to really vet and, and be sure that the quality of persons that are going to go into elected position are people who are capable, who are competent, who, who naturally have the desire to serve, because essentially it's about service. If we make mistakes as a nation and elect people based on party affiliation, based on names, based on um, you know money, based on godfatherism, then we'll keep having this kind of um, result politically. Prince, uh, 
we'll, we'll go on a, on a short break very right. soon. But when we return, mm. I would like to take you up on this issue. How much are the people prepared to elect the right leaders? Right. Join us when we return. For almost a decade, the Nigerian army have given their all to ensure that our dear country is not overrun by Boko Haram insurgents. Some have in the process paid the ultimate price, while many will forever live with indelible scars occasioned by their determination to protect the country, no matter the hurdle. Despite these, they have remained resolute and undaunted, and today, all territories the insurgents want to control of have been recaptured and normalcy restored. And now, for the first time in a long time, the end of Boko Haram is foreseeable. Therefore, the wisest thing for the remaining insurgents to do is to surrender today or face total destruction from the army. Remember, the Nigerian army will stop at nothing to ensure that total peace is restored in all parts of the country. So, be wise and embrace peace today or get ready to be ruthlessly dealt with. This message is brought to you by the Coalition on Conflict Resolution and Human Rights in Nigeria. Thanks for being there all this while. Now, Prince, yes. straight to the point. Right. Do you think the Nigerian electorate is ready, has the right education to know who will represent them appropriately? Yeah, absolutely, Ben. Um, on that note, I'm optimistic this time. Um, and that's it's a combination of a lot of things that have happened. So from the uh, killings that we have, from you know, from the difficulty people are having economically, also from you know, uh, the different action and statement of um, our leaders. You know, the last being uh, the National Assembly saga, with the drama there, and then of course the you president. Mean the drama. Yes, and of course the president. Or the yes, drama. of course. Thank you, and of course the president calling a lot of Nigerian useless. So now people are more enlightened that, you know, um, to solve the problems of our country uh, is about getting the right quality of leadership. Um, I know um, from what I have seen or hear, um, the community that I want to represent, they have been, they've been deprived of many social infrastructure. So water, like you mentioned earlier on, um, you know, electricity, good roads, even sound uh, education policies, you know, lack of housing. Those people haven't been victims of those uh, leadership or lack of leadership thereof, are ready now to say no to money politics and to say no to Godfatherism and actually uh, you know, go out there and, and, and then elect people of, of credible you know, uh, pedigree. Well, Prince, it's a wonderful conversation, mm -hmm. but for the want of time, yes. we just have to stop at a point. All right. But let me ask you this question before we conclude uh, the program. What do you think? the Nigerian electorate should look out for mm, okay, good. ahead of 2019. Okay, fantastic. Um, quick, quickly, uh, there are three things that I, I would suggest to uh, the Nigerian electorate to look at this time. First of all, you have to uh, look at the non-performing politician and sack them. You are the boss, kick them out. Secondly, look for new people that have never been part of politics, that are professional, that are technocrats. Irrespective of the fact that they may not have money, they may not come from the big parties, it doesn't matter. You need to look at what they achieve professionally and be able to make that dissemination. Thirdly, watch out and be uh, hesitant for people who want to come to you and say, hey, this is money to vote for us. Those people that are bringing money to politics are only going there to recover this money and even make more to want to run for bigger offices. So if you see those people, please run away from them. Never support them because they're never going to do good um, in the communities. If you see those people, run away from them, never support them, they are never going to do you good when they come to your communities. Those are the words of my guest, Prince Adetunji. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Ben. It's been heard on, on television, Nigeria. As we hand off today's show, it is important to remind us that Nigeria has come of age and Nigerians must wake up to the task of nation building, especially as the job of development can no longer be left in the hands of politicians and the elites who for more than five decades have taken the country on a ride. Real questions must be asked and real answers sought. The people must demand quality representation at all levels of government. And where that is not given, Nigerians must enforce their will 
through constitutionally provided means. That is the much we can take on today's edition of Edom. Many thanks to my guest, Prince David Adetuji Adeyeye, and all those who contributed in making today's program successful. Until I come your way again, let's focus on quality representation in 2019. I am Bennett Joshua. Thanks for watching. Thank you.